First of all, I'm going to start out with this picture here is said to be a picture of Dr. Edward Morton. First one that I've ever seen. I'm going to make sure that I'm getting a somewhat clear view of this on my camera screen. Yeah, I am. Okay, there we go. So that's it. That's Dr. Edward Morton. This is the immigrant ancestor, the son of Charles Cole Morton. He married Rebecca Smith, who is said to be um, related to General Prudeau, that was one of the generals in the American Revolutionary War. Close that. Okay. Now, there's also said to be two pictures of Rebecca Smith here. And here is who later is Rebecca Morton, the wife of Dr. Edward. Because she would have had a mother whose last name was Prudeau, if I have that right. I want to make sure I'm actually getting this in a good way. So I'm going to just go over here. There it is. Okay. And the other picture of what is said to be Rebecca Smith is right here. These came from Bruce Howard, who was uh, who was a descendant of Dr. Edward. And that, for whatever reason, that branch of the family held on to the birth, death, and marriage records. Okay, now <coughs> some of the little more comp <coughs> complicated parts, <coughs> and to make sense of it, it's gonna and what's and this is gonna be. Part of the glue that makes everything make sense in a more authoritative way than the one I'm going to present here, but I was able to pretty much sort out what had happened without the benefit of both this and the Bible records I'm going to show you. Uh, I had a good idea of, of how the, we were dealing with the same family after I had looked at various scattered records about the internet. But, um, okay, so what happened? Okay, so Charles. Carl Morton, who died in 1819, inherited the Irish estates from Dr. Charles Morton, principal librarian of the British Museum. When he died in 1819, and he's said to be buried at, um, at the St. Thomas Graveyard in Dublin, um, I'll show that record in, in, in just a bit, amongst the family Bible records, actually. I'm going to call these Bible records. I don't know if they're actually in a Bible, they're at least in a journal. Um, the next, then uh, Charles Carr and Charlotte Tatlow's son, Charles Morton, was the next proprietor of the, the, the Irish estates, next owner, the next main beneficiary. And he uh, was the one that I had discussed a little bit about. The only reason why I went into his death in that much detail when I was discussing Dr. Charles Morton was because it mentioned there was a monumental inscription in Rosterdam, and um, I thought it possible that um, that being in Holland and, Do and Dr. Morton having gone to uh, medical school at Leiden, that uh, that monumental inscription that Charles Morton had that was just mentioned as a side comment in one of the inquisitions had something to may have some, something to do with his ancestry. I don't know, it's inconclusive, but I already brought it up. Anyway, that Charles Morton was either killed or committed suicide in 1832. I'm adding he either was killed. The, the official ruling was that he committed suicide, but I, looking at the evidence, I kind of question how it could have been suicide. But nonetheless, after 1832, the next uh, old eldest son was Pierce Morton. And Pierce Morton uh, was a brilliant mathematician, and eventually, towards the end of his life, he uh, moved down to the Cape of Good Hope and worked at the observatory there on various um, astronomical observations through telescopes and things of that nature. And he was a uh, student of George Biddle Aries, and so he kind of continued uh, Dr. Charles Morton's uh, work with the transit of Venus in his own own way in that fashion. Anyway, so Pierce Morton 
before he ended up losing the Irish estates in 1844, as far as I can tell, and I'll go into that document in a second. But Pierce Morton had uh, four children total, three that are mentioned in this uh, account here. And um, I'm hoping that uh, to be able to make a connection for uh, if there are any descendants of Arthur Pratt Winter Morton. Uh, to, to be able to present some evidence to help them connect because, of course, these descendants wouldn't have the benefit of going into this act of parliament to find the name Arthur Pryor Winter Morton printed because he wasn't, he'd only been born three days prior to the act being enabled and they, they never, <laughs> they just never got it in there. So anyway, Pierce Morton married a woman named Louisa Somerville. They had three children and Pierce Morton's son was Pierce Edward Morton. Now, Pierce Morton Sr. died in South Africa, 18th April, 1859. I got that record from um, uh, the South African archives. And uh, he's buried at Somerset Road Cemetery. I posted a link to that and transcribed it in my notes. Those things are available up at Ancestry.com. And now, after Pierce Edward Morton's father died, he was down as a member of the Navy, either the Navy list is mis misprinted, but I doubt, I think I came to the conclusion that Pierce Edward, his son, was actually down in, um, followed in his footsteps and went down to the same observatory, worked at the same position for about a year, and then took some time off and went on a cruise and went back to Canada. I don't know, and I'll definitely have evidence of that. And he ended up dying. Um, he was drowned on a, bo a boat trip and the yacht wave, okay? But he also appears in Dr. Edward Morton's 1861 census in Canada at East Coulombury. That helps draw the connection. Okay, so let's get back to this. So yeah, so how did Pierce Edward Morton's journal end up in the hands of um, a descendant of um, Edward Morton's son, Saville Edward Morton, and Maria Collins, uh, now, in, now in the possession of the Howard family. Well, uh, what happened, again, Pierce Edward Morton came down, he traveled over to Canada, he was staying, for, obviously, he was staying for a little while, or at least had contact at one point or the other with um, uh, Dr. Edward Morton's family, and his journals were, I guess, there while he was on his trip and then when he died the journals were still there at the house and they didn't have anybody to send this back to because of all the children of Charles Carr Morton uh, John Bacon Morton was lost at sea in 1825 and all these records I'll show um, of course Edward Morton is the individual that was living in Canada at the time um, Elizabeth Charlotte Morton had married in France to a guy named um, Emile Gabriel Condro. I got that from Pelote's Index, listing them as having married at Hastings in Sussex County in 1832, and they had a daughter named Charlotte Elizabeth Condro. That's also listed in this document here. And she was born actually in Florence, Italy, which is strange, and she died in 1895, and I think she probably died single, but I'm not exactly sure. And um, so Anna Morton had died young, and then Marianne, now they could have perhaps sent the journals back to Marianne Morton, but she was a single woman living in England. She lived till 1885, pretty much uh, living with her sister Janetta, her mom for a while, until her mom died in 1854, and her sister Janetta, if I can find this, died in 1885. Let's keep going down the line. Um, the next child, Saville Morton, uh, there was actually the second Saville. The first Saville died almost 10 days after its birth, according to John Tatlow's diary. Uh, the next child, Sophia, died about two years old in Somerset County at Clifton. And then Saville Morton, who reached adulthood, was murdered in, on October 1st, 1852, and he is the subject of Jill Gray's book. Um, very interesting man. <laughs> okay, the next, so he was 
you know, he was dead by 1861, right? You can't, you know, you can't send the journals back to Uncle Savile, right? Edmund